and I'm just carrying the baton to push it through the music. And that's what made with love is. The food must be made with love. If the food ain't made with love, if the service ain't made with love, if the, if the product ain't made with love, don't buy it. Everything you do, do with love. Let me ask you this, because I know we met in Atlanta. Yeah. Are you an Atlanta native or are you a D.C. native? Where are you from? I'm a D.C. native. Okay. I was, I was born in D.C. I'm going to break the ice on this, man, because... A lot of people have a problem with this thing that I'm about to discuss, but I was born in D.C. Mm -hmm. and I lived in D.C. as a baby and my my mother was on drugs and she was homeless. She was out on the street. So she basically, she bet my mother basically aborted me, but I ended up coming out anyway and she discarded me when I came out. So the community had to raise me around 18th, Montana, Saratoga, and between First Street, Bloomingdale, these areas, people, anybody in the city know these areas. Mm -hmm. So the community basically raised me around that time, and my grandmother took me in. So I was in this, basically just wilding around in the streets of D.C. while my mother was on drugs, and then my aunt and uncle came and scooped me up, and we lived in D.C. for a while, and then they moved me to Virginia. And this was around the time where the, the Rayful Edmonds era was big, the crack era was big. Right. And my parents was tired of living in the city, and they figured it would be a better life. So we moved to Alexandria when I was a child, and then we moved to Fairfax when I was like eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And I grew up there until I met my mother when I was a teenager. I met my mother when I was 14 years old, my biological mother. My whole life, I thought that my aunt and uncle was my parents. Gotcha. But they, they protected me because my mother was on drugs, and D.C. was really rough at the time. So after I connected with my mother at 14, she started going through the treatment programs and the AA meetings. So she started getting cleaned up. So <clears throat> around that time, I would transflow between D.C. and Virginia uh, to build a relationship with my mom and go to school in Virginia. So my aunt and uncle would hold me down and make sure that I was getting the right resources in Virginia, but I still would transflow between my hometown to build a relationship with my mother. Okay. So I would technically say <laughs> that I'm from the DMV. I was born in D.C., but I can honestly say I'm from the DMV because I also matric matriculated. Tell, tell know, everybody what the DMV is because not everybody knows what it so is. So the DMV, exactly. That's why I had to give that background. <laughs> so the DMV, for everybody who's outside of D.C., is the D.C. metropolitan area. That's D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. We're all neighbors. Yeah, we're all neighbors. neighbors. It's one of the most peculiar metro. It, <laughs> yeah, I found out about it when I was in it, Connecticut, of all places. No, Delaware, my bad. Yeah. Delaware, of all places, yeah. Yeah. D.C. is very small. Coming out to Georgia, I was just like, where is everything? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Lady Furnace, tell us where you're from. Where are you from, lady? I am from Podunk, Lake Wales, Florida. <laughs> Lake Wales. <laughs> true that, true that. The place you never want to go. No, let me stop Polk County raised me, and I got a tattoo that says, don't forget where you came from. Yeah. And, and uh, we were frankly been talking uh, about that. that a lot lately, actually. Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah, I'm from Florida. I lived in Colorado for a few years. And then um, I lived in Maryland for a year. I met, uh, met up with this guy, Adam, who's a, a huge activist in D.C., and he uh, invited me out to Maryland to work on this project. So I was like an intern for a year. And then after that year was up, I moved to D.C. And he's actually my roommate now. But um, that's how Frank and I met was mm -hmm. through campaigning and all that. We've worked on three campaigns together. We worked so on three campaigns. We got the shrooms decriminalized together. And we also... Uh, we got rid of a corrupt oh yeah and we got we also got a Jack Evans. yeah we got we got rid of yeah, jack evans you oh, oh and you, know, <laughs> and you know it's so funny i mentioned jack evans in the single be free jack evans that's ward two uh and uh i tried to connect with him about the song but he didn't do shit and i said shit on purpose uh i have <laughs> shout out to all my politicians who supported me who's real who actually support the community and shout out to all the politicians who's faking and not supporting the community. Her. And as far as like, you know, her tattoo and her being from, you know, late with her, her being from the trap, the swamp. <laughs> I was about to say the swamp. The swamp. <laughs> the swamp. Say it right. Don't forget the where you where you come from. Don't forget where you come from. 
Brian, man. Tell so, so where, where we come from, man? Where me we come me from? and you. You said you met me in Atlanta. Man, I, I met you in the middle. I, I won't say the middle. It wasn't. It wasn't quite the beginning. I feel like you had already started a journey, but I think when we met, you were kind of at the beginning stages still. And yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's like the vision. I was at the beginning stages in my head. Yeah, you're at the Everything vision part. Everything was in my head. Cause remember, you helped me tell him like you helped me with my business plan. Like you helped me with my vision. You know, I camped out at your house. I remember it, man. I I, I don't talk about myself though. <laughs> oh, but I remember it. All right, well, he doesn't talk about himself, so let me talk about him. <laughs> this man is a true man of God. Like, for real, this man is a family man. Y'all don't even know. Like, y'all need to get to know this man, for real. Because this man opened his doors to me when I literally sacrificed everything. When I left everything, I told Brian straight up, and said, yo, I'm going to build this thing, this music thing, and this whole media empire I'm going to build it by faith, bro. I don't know where I'm going to go tomorrow. I don't care where I'm going to go tomorrow. And I literally did not know where I was go. And let me tell you, you something. I'm going to tell you. I did not know I was. I just jumped on the, on the, on the, on the, I just got a ticket and made it to Atlanta and said, I'm going to build this plan. I don't know how. I don't know what. I don't know when. But I know I'm supposed to build this plan. And, and Brian, you held me down through that. Like, you was with me instead. You was like, dog. I'm not letting you go out like this. Like, I understand you with your dream and you with this shit, but it's like, bruh, you not, I'm not leaving you until you have a place to stay. And I told Brian straight up, I was like, you know, you know, when you risking off for the dream, you don't even care about where a place to stay. I was like, nigga, I can sleep right here. Brian was like, no, you're not going to sleep right there, nigga. You're coming to my house. <laughs> like, 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 I was, I was so gung-ho off the dream. You don't understand. I mean, Tell him, Brian, like, <laughs> what, I, was it not, not real? Yeah, it's real. Real talk. Good God. Yeah. Dropped you off and had to pick you back up to get you back to the house. I remember that. Yeah. I remember some of the places you were staying. But yeah. just just watching the vision come true to me is crazy. I, I remember, um, I won't say the name, but I had a neighbor who was just like, mm, okay, okay. And I went, I saw... Frankie go from to me at the time was a little timid Frankie to like it was like he was overshadowing her and just like I'm gonna do this you ain't gonna tell me what I'm not gonna do I rebuke you and, and he did everything that he said he was gonna do too <laughs> yeah. you've already done it at this point I know and you're still going higher so. I know and the thing is you know I, I won over 10 campaigns within less than 8 years you know since then around mm -hmm. that time since then you know, including the Initiative 81, thanks to Lady Furnish, you know, including, you know, winning one of the first film festivals in D.C. and being filmmaker of the month through all the other back work. That's not to mention all the back work on all right. the other celebrities and stuff, you know, that I did freelance videography for. Um, but the thing about it is, you know, if it wasn't for me sacrificing and risking it all on the single turn of the wheel, like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> Think and Grow Rich. Oh, yeah. You know, Napoleon Hill, risking it all on a single, when we talk Seven Spiritual Laws Seven, yeah. by Deepak Chopra, those books held me down, man. You know, and you gave me the book. You, Brian gave me the book, Seven Spiritual Laws. And I said, I, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to detach myself. I had, you know, I had a degree. I graduated mm -hmm. from college. I had resume. I had, bro, I had key. Right. But I was like, I'm not going that route. I'm going to stay in these books and I'm going to grind my way. I'm going to take, I'm going to go God's route. And <laughs> well, I remember I don't we, know we how, fasted. Like, somehow, we, I, like, I turned vegan for a little bit. Anyone who knows me, and especially now, I was vegan. I was raw vegan. Like, I was telling everybody, I'm like, the trees are talking to me. Like, I get it now. The superpowers they talk about, they're talking. Like, and we were listening. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that and those valley experiences, and there's more. That's mm -hmm. not going to have. But those valley experiences is what led me to the point where I've been able to affect the city and do all the things that we've been talking about and get us to the point where we had made with love. And that's what leads me to, you know, my EP that right. I'm working on called Grace and that's why I named the EP that I'm working on Grace mm -hmm. I, call, I call it Grace because it's only by the grace of God that I made it through all those valid experiences to be even right here to even be talking to y'all and those stories I mentioned on the EP mm -hmm. so y'all stay connected with me man 
I, I am Frankie Bob, so y'all can hear the story, so y'all can hear the struggle, so y'all can hear why I was sleeping on this nigga's couch, so you can hear what I was going through with my mother and why I only met my mother until I was 14 years old, you know, and how I made it through all of that, juggling the game with the politics, juggling the strippers, uh, juggling the hustle, the streets. The, the, the weed game juggling, you know, my aunt and uncle and my parents turning their back on me to losing everything, you know, starting my life all over again. Like the Grace EP, man, the Grace EP. I, I am Frankie Boss. That's the Instagram. Join me on Patreon. Uh, early access and exclusive education, exclusive content. You know, uh, Frankie Boss. This is Patreon. Patreon.com slash I am Frankie Boss. And um, you can do a $3 membership, you can do a $9 membership, a $10 membership, a $15 membership, you know, to keep everything going and join our digital community. The keychain movement, to get keychain movement, it's a family. It's a family of people that want to fight for freedom. It's a, it's a family of people and a movement of people that want to use art to help create social change and help empower people.